One of my friends is getting ready to move out of the country to live abroad. He was in the process of downsizing his possessions and he came across his older desktop. So he reached out to me for advice on how much it's worth in hopes of selling it. The parts in his build are getting a bit old, but they're not like completely obsolete, give it to your parents as a email PC type old. They're more like a, you'll get way better performance and a better upgrade path if you spend a tad bit more old, if that makes sense. Uh, but based on the parts list that he gave me, I told him that he could get 300, maybe 350 for it in the local market. Uh, at that point, he says to me, before I put it on Craigslist, would you like to buy it for $100? So I tell him I got because I can make some fun content with it and then give it away to someone who needs it. When he heard that, he offers me the PC for free. For free? He said, okay. So we meet up for some Korean barbecue, we catch up, and I get the PC from him, and here we are. Thank you for generously donating this PC, Solomon. I'm sure it's gonna make someone really happy and they'll get lots of joy out of it. But first, let's check it out and see how I breathe some new life into it right after this. Amazon product reviews are pretty much garbage nowadays. I rarely look at them anymore because it's mostly broad reviews or people who leave five stars just for the product showing up. This is where Luster comes in. It's a free browser extension that helps you get the information that you need before making a purchase decision. I'm talking about trusted, in-depth reviews from well-known sources that we all know in the tech community. Sources that I've already been using for years, except now it's automatically gathered and organized for me. It also recommends similar products and groups them up at different price points so I can make the comparison myself and choose what's best for me and my own budget. I really like it and I think you will too. You can learn more about Luster by clicking on the link down in the description below and if it seems useful to you, definitely give it a try. Thanks for checking it out, and now let's get back to the video. I actually opened up this PC and started cleaning it out live on stream, which by the way, I stream every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. Be sure to stop by and hang out with me as I work on projects for the channel, deal hunt, and more. But in case you missed that stream, let's quickly run over what's inside. For the core specs, it's got a 4th gen Intel i5-4690K paired with a Gigabyte Z97X UD3H motherboard and a stock Intel heatsink. It has 16GB of HyperX Fury DDR3 RAM at 1866 megahertz, and the graphics card is the ASUS Strix GTX 960 with 2GB of video memory. These are going to be the primary contributors to the gaming performance, and right off the bat, you can see we have a CPU that was considered mid to upper mid-range back in 2014, and the graphics card was mid-range in 2015. Remember that consumer i5s didn't have hyper-threading until Intel's 10th gen, and they didn't even have more than 4 cores until Intel's 8th gen. So we're talking about 4 core, 4 threads here, which is starting to show its age. For the remaining parts, there is a 250 gigabyte Samsung 850 EVO SSD, which is still very usable. It's a bit small for today's games, but it's enough to function as a boot drive and maybe fit a couple of games. There's also the power supply, which is a pretty dated Corsair TX650. This was a well-regarded power supply when it released, but that was way back in 2008. And last but not least is the case, which is the fractal design defined R4. This is a pretty nice case, but it's also pretty old. It came out in 2012. What I don't like most about it is the large optical and hard drive cages in the front, which aren't really necessary for builds nowadays, as well as the lack of airflow as configured. Now to be fair, it does have a lot of sound dampening materials to make it as quiet as possible, but I'm not really a stickler about fan noise, and the way this case achieves silence means it trades off a lot of airflow, because most of the panels, including the openings for fans, get covered by sound dampening material. There was a lot of dust buildup near the single exhaust fan in the back, and at the expansion brackets, so it's seems like there was a negative pressure situation going on with the exhaust fan, pulling in air mostly through the space below it, as well as in the back bracket of the graphics card as seen by how much dust there was there. And that was about as much airflow as it was really getting. I took the case out back during stream and I blew out as much dust as I could, then I disassembled the entire system and wiped it down with the rag and rubbing alcohol. To give the build a bit of a refresh, I'm putting it into a new case and I'm swapping out the power supply. Antec had reached out a while back and sent me one of their cases and power supplies to use in a video, and it turns out a project like this was perfect for it. The case we're swapping to is the DF700 Flux. This is a mid-tower that comes with five fans, three of which are addressable RGB and located in the front mesh panel, one at the rear exhaust, and there's an optional one that you can install on the power supply basement for additional GPU cooling. It has a pretty interesting wavy front mesh, which sets it apart from otherwise being a standard box-shaped case. I honestly wasn't too fond of the waves initially, but it's grown on me over time, and I actually really like it now. Overall, it's an easy case to build in with good placement for cutouts and cable routing, and plenty of room to hide excess cables at the rear and the basement. Because the motherboard we have is a little bit older, it doesn't have an addressable RGB header, but this case comes with a fan and an RGB hub, which has its own pre-programmed lighting effects, and can be plugged into the motherboard to control the fan speed. 
Regarding the power supply, I definitely wanted to replace the existing one with something newer. As I mentioned earlier, the one that was in it came out in 2008, so the design and the standards are pretty dated. If you take a look at the list of protections it has, you may notice that it's missing one that even modern budget units have, and that's over temperature protection. That's put in place to shut off your power supply if the temperature gets too high, which could lead to potential damage of the unit, or worst case scenario, become a fire hazard. So yeah, I definitely wanted to replace that, plus my friend had been using it for 6 or so years and it may have been coming up to the end of life. Income Antex Neo Eco 850 Watt Platinum. You're probably thinking to yourself, is he seriously putting that high end of a power supply into the system? Hear me out here. When they sent it out, I wasn't sure which build I'd be able to use it with, but I think this one actually works out perfectly. Now normally, I wouldn't recommend you put something that's this premium into an old used budget build like this. 850 watts is way overkill for the parts that we have, and a platinum efficiency carries a premium that simply doesn't make sense for the total cost of the system. However, since we are going to be giving this build away, starting the next owner of this PC off with a brand new power supply and a brand new case, that's a pretty good foundation that will be able to handle any and all future upgrades without question and it's made with quality components that will last a long time. Otherwise, you can get something that's like 5 or 600 watts and it'll be plenty fine for the system as is. And for the last upgrade to freshen up the system, I replaced the dinky Intel stock cooler with the Ares Game River 5 tower cooler. For $25, this not only looks way better, but also has lower fan noise and has better cooling capabilities to let us overclock the 4690K. And here is the system refresh. Now for the fun part, the benchmarking. I overclocked the CPU and GPU to squeeze out any additional performance I could, and I was able to get up to 4.6 GHz on the 4690K, and for the GTX 960, I got an additional 150 MHz on the core, and an additional 400 MHz on the memory. The 16GB of HyperX Fury was running at its rated 1866 MHz. All tests were run in 1080p at various graphics settings, and only one of the titles, Halo Infinite, required going as far as resolution scaling and frame capping to get a playable experience. Uh, but yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks.
despite these components being six to seven years old, they can offer a decent gaming experience, especially for the people out there whose primary games are esports titles, like League of Legends, Valorant, Dota, and there are a lot of those people out there who do exclusively play those games. I was perfectly happy while benchmarking all those titles shown. The experience wasn't ruined by like horribly low frame rates or massively like stuttery frame drops. The worst experience was Halo Infinite, like I mentioned earlier, which mind you is a brand new title released in late 2021. And even then with the resolution scaling, it honestly didn't look that bad if you have like reasonable expectations. It got playable frame rates. And even after I got my benchmarking done, like all the numbers for it, I played several more matches on on this system, it's not like the experience was so horrible that I wanted to stop right away and go back to my main computer. I really try to look at things on a positive note, especially when it comes to older hardware like this. Sure, I'll point out that it may be aging or that it may not be as good of value as newer components, but I'll never just straight talk trash about it because I know there are people out there who do have this hardware and it may be the best that they can afford, so I try to be respectful of that, you know? On that note, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed and found it either helpful or entertaining in one way or another. Let me know your overall thoughts on the build down in the comments below. I want to thank my friend Solomon for giving me this PC so I can make this content on, as well as to be able to give away in a future video. And I want to thank Antec for sending over these parts to help refresh the build. And I want to thank you all, as always, for watching. And a very special thanks to the channel members out there for furthering support the channel. With membership, you get access to custom emotes that you can use both during live streams and in the comments of any of my videos as well as loyalty badges and you get discount on upcoming merch which i will be launching soon i'm wearing some of the merch now uh but yeah other than that i'll see you all down in the comments as well as in the next video bye